In my last video, we talked about Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom in Louisville, Kentucky. I said how it proves size doesn't matter and packs a lot in its small, compact footprint. I also said how it has some of the best airtime you can find on any coaster. Well, right around the entrance of the park is a small little blue coaster that might have been one of the biggest surprises for me. This is Lightning Run, a one-of-a-kind Chance Rides Hyper GTX that absolutely blew me away. I knew this ride was going to be good, but I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. First of all, how are there not more of these things? They are small, compact rides that manage to pack so much into a tiny little footprint. Plus, they're cheap, and they're not big, so they can go anywhere. Plus, I feel like this would fit at any park. This kind of ride would fit just as well at King's Island as it would at Fun Spot, so I still don't understand how this model hasn't seemed to catch on. Plus, Chance Rides has also made inverting versions of this model, which is sick, so I really want to see parks start adding more Hyper GTXs. But for now, let's just talk about Lightning Run. The best way to describe this ride is if RMC made a steel coaster. The airtime feels the same, and honestly, the layout does as well, minus the twist towards the end. Plus, the trains are very much alike, which is really my only complaint with this ride. This ride has a seatbelt and a pretty bulky lap bar, which really doesn't matter when the ride begins, but it's still a little annoying. But my biggest complaint with this train is, yes, it has shin guards. I hate shin guards so much. Lightning Run restraints are a slightly bulkier RMC restraints, so they're not the best. But at the end of the day, they really aren't that bad. It definitely could be much worse. Now this ride has some deadly airtime. I know I mentioned it earlier, but the main reason why I love this ride so much is because of how deadly the airtime really is. This ride pulls zero to no forces, except on the twisty section, but this ride does whip you a lot from side to side, and the airtime is phenomenal. This ride begins when you ascend the lift hill, and this lift hill is bizarre. You start going really slow up the lift hill, and then all of a sudden in the middle of the lift, it speeds up by at least 3 miles per hour. It's really bizarre, and I don't understand it, but hey, it works I guess. You then have this small 80 degree drop, which is personally my favorite first drop of all time. In the front, you get some great floater going down this drop since it's really steep, but the back row is where you want to be. Not only for this drop, but for the entire coaster. Lightning Run is 100% a back row ride. The first drop is absolutely deadly. In the back, you get a strong pop of flow ejector airtime, and then the train slams you back down since it's very compact. It's one of the craziest first drops you'll ever experience. After you twist down and go up into a deadly flow ejector hill. This hill absolutely throws you, and I would go as far to say that this hill is stronger than Storm Chaser's first hill. After you go through a turnaround, which if I'm going to be honest, is the most forgettable part of the ride. It really doesn't do anything, but it's cool. After this, you twist and go through another amazing ejector hill, and twist up into a wave turn, which is also really good. You get a weird sideways pop of airtime, and I absolutely love that. You then go through another airtime hill, and this hill in the back is easily one of the strongest moments on the ride. After this, you twist up into an airtime hill, and this one is awesome, because you get airtime, and that is followed by insane laterals, so this hill was crazy. You then go through an outer banked hill, which is really good, but in my eyes, it was one of the weaker pops on the ride. And after this, you go through an S-bend, which is really good, easily the most intense part of the ride. After this, you enter the grand finale with four back-to-back -back airtime hills, and each one of these hills, even the pop into the break run, gives you deadly airtime. These four airtime hills alone, I would say are even stronger than some RMCs. All of them are absolutely insane, and it's the perfect way to end the ride. Highlights on this ride are definitely the first drop, the lateral airtime hill, and the four back-to-back -back airtime finale. These three elements are my favorite, but honestly, every element on this ride is super good. I rode Lightning Run three times on my trip to Kentucky Kingdom, twice in the back and once in the front, and my back row rides were my favorite. One of them was in night, and that ride was insane because Lightning Run was hauling. Overall, this ride is a beast, and I know many people won't agree with this, and that's completely okay, but Lightning Run is my personal favorite coaster in the park, and it was my favorite coaster on the trip, which also included Holiday World and Kings Island. I know it's an extremely unpopular opinion, but I really enjoyed Lightning Run. When you go to ride it though, I had low expectations going into the ride. And I know I said a lot of good things about it, but I would also suggest going into the ride with low expectations. I am one of these weird people who has lots of weird opinions, so if I say a coaster is good, honestly, it most likely isn't that good. 
but I feel pretty strongly about Lightning Run. In the end, Lightning Run is a fantastic ride, and I hope we can see more Chance Hyper GTX coasters appear in other parks very soon. Also, if you haven't already, it would be awesome if you could subscribe. It's the best way to help the channel grow, and I will greatly appreciate it. And don't forget to check out my podcast and merchandise in the link in the description. And finally, if you need free, non-copyrighted off-ride and POVs, check out my second channel, TPH Productions. As always, this is Hunter from Theme Park Hunting. I'll see you guys later, and follow the thrill. Thank <laughs> you.